mean, in a fairly extreme way, if you're trying to influence me and I'm just not responding, it's a form of aggressive behavior. In a way, over responding is on here. Is that? So over responding, kind of not taking on my <coughs> my needs. See, my, my fear of this <coughs> is, from my own perspective, is like, I think I'm aggressive. Not the way that you have it portrayed in your quartile. Is that I'm going to overreact by being less responsive. But then what you're saying just now is that that would be foreseen as another form of aggression. If I make myself clear. I, I can say something that uh, maybe I, I've changed my viewpoint. Am I going to try and it <laughs> uh, It's going back to those sheets. Um, I don't see you as aggressive. Now, you know, since we're being in groups, I don't think you're very aggressive. No, I, I don't think, in Alice's case, that not being responding, no responding is being aggressive. She's just trying to alter her behaviour because she perceives herself as being aggressive. I would, I would have said no, not, not responding was deliberately. Mm -hmm. <coughs> In, in what we call the third eye <coughs> model, there's like two skills. There's a self <coughs> and uh, <coughs> what I'd like to do is draw a line, which is a timeline. <coughs> and in the middle, there's, there's some event where you're actually into some self-defeating behavior. Whatever it is, right? Well, it's <coughs> not assertive or aggressive, it doesn't matter. So that this, is, this, is the, this is the time when the event's happening, and at that point in time, that's after the event, okay? So, I mean, time's coming towards me, um, and I'm into some activity, and has some self-defeating behavior in it, and then time's finished and off the sheet. And then David's first day, I'm not aware of that. I just go blundering through the life, and I'll live through any man, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever, okay? And I'm not aware. And that, that was where I was, a lot of stuff with a blind eye. First thing that can happen <coughs> is that after the event, so this is post-event, You become aware, and you say, "Hey, no, I would, I'm not happy with that. Whether it was being non-assertive or whether it was being aggressive, hey, I'm not happy with that." That's the self-observation. You're beginning to to be aware and observe that when you behave that way, you're not happy with that. It's usually your feelings tell you that. You're annoyed or you're anxious or frustrated or... What's that? So the awareness bit in David's model is, well, at least you become aware that in that sort of event, behaving like that isn't really enjoyable, isn't really optimizing uh, quality for you. Right? Now, you keep on doing that, go through the event, oh shit, right? Oh shit. Keep on doing it. The, the key thing is to begin to, to, to come back to here and say, hey, there's one of these events turning up where I normally don't perform very well. I'm not going to just be like uh, man's a machine and 
blunder through it again and I kick myself or I'm going to try and do something different. So the, the self-remembering bit is to remember before the event to give yourself a choice of behaving differently. <coughs> it's not easy. One of the events for me which I suddenly discovered that had been like didn't notice uh, it was way back <coughs> in the 70s and uh, several popular level locations in Newcastle now that frequently travel from one to the other and like any major city you get in traffic jams that are a bit unpredictable so frequently at end of late meetings okay and eventually I discovered looking back hey I got really really wound up in a traffic jam and when I come to the meeting I'm sweating and I'm annoyed and I can't listen and I can't perform and I can't contribute. It's awful, right? So I noticed that a lot. <laughs> right? But I'm still getting annoyed in traffic jams, you know? So then I began to uh, get occasionally, just occasionally, into, hey, it's a traffic jam. I mean, I would, I'd always set off as early as possible, right? I'm crazy on getting there too early. But it's a traffic jam. I can't control it. Uh, I'll just work out, try to keep calm. So there are some techniques like my wife laughs at me, I always travel with a flask of coffee. Even when I travel to uh, Paisley or Truman, I've got a flask of coffee. I pour some of the coffee in a traffic jam. I play with the radio. But I don't bother trying to hop around lanes or. So I'm working hard at not getting. And it's not an overnight thing like that, right? So you don't get magic success. So you, you, you know, there's another one turns up, oh, and you get a little better at handling it, and a little better at handling it, until now, quite calm on traffic jam. I don't bother getting wound up. So that's how you go from discovering the awareness, and then trying to get back into real time, pre-event time, and then making a different choice at this point. Don't be beating yourself with that. So is there something on that sheet that you could pick and for yourself write that in and say, well, hey, at least I'm beginning to uh, look at it. So, so is there a chance that you can recognize it as it's coming up? Is there? So what's the chance of promising yourself to um, have a go at avoiding some form of self-defeating behavior when you get back on Monday? situation that when I see him opening the door I've even got to say to myself now he's, he's going to start, he's going to wind up so for heaven's sake don't take the bait and I, and I do that and I can do it for so long and then he just says one thing and, I, <coughs> and I'm in there again but at least I've recognised it and I am trying to address it but it, it's very very difficult yeah, it's not easy I think the thing as well with this obviously in an ideal world then you would be able to prepare yourself, but maybe um, because you react, if somebody comes in to you, like Alice has done this guy deliberately winds her up, maybe if somebody's deliberately aggressive and you know, okay, I've got to maybe take a step back before I respond, sometimes you know, your emotions will come first in your role. 
frustrating. Mm. You know, with all, obviously it would be ideal to do that, but maybe in some cases it's not always possible. Maybe you have to adapt it to the circumstance. I mean, I can really, when you're saying about, you know, being a traffic jam person, for me, yes, I mean, that's an ideal uh, example for me because I get absolutely enraged in traffic jams. Um, <coughs> and that, for me, that is a good example because I could try and do something about it. It doesn't always make it easier because I get so frustrated, get really, really angry and aggressive. Touch out the other drivers. Yes, <laughs> I think uh, for me it's being late. Yeah. I just hate being late. Mm. If I know that I'm going to be late, I get slightly uptight. So, but by the time I get there, even if it's five minutes late, mm. um, I'm still uptight. I, you know, thought about it, and you know, what's five, ten minutes late? That doesn't really mean a lot, but it can have an impact if you're going to. Uh, Meeting, not being able to think straight. Oh, if you're wrong, so I'll tell you. For me, I can start with you now. You just get, uh, I think it you just get uh, unconsciously confident in whatever it is you're trying to do. If you work it out, it goes, oh, and at some stage you don't even detect what it is, it just becomes part of you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not getting worked up or whatever it has to be. The unfortunate thing is when you do get uptight, basically you're losing control. Yeah. And then whatever comes afterwards, you're not really fully in control of what you're saying or what you're sure. doing. And then you stand back and think, why on earth did I do that? But it all links back to that, you know, there's just the about the caveman threat, fight and flight, oh, yeah. any kind of perceived threat. Uh, if I give you an example, I, I, I felt this week, you know, on Monday morning, and uh, we're all sitting through here, and there's like three people missing, so I think, what's going on here? You know, have they not turned up? Or I walked through to reception, and uh, you were there, and Tommy, it was Tommy, 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 and myself, and Marvel. Mm -hmm. was it? Oh, it was Marvel because Marvel had just come into reception, actually. Okay, and you were really revved up, right? You really, you felt. Uh, I, I felt that you, you felt uh, a bit threatened because. Instead of like, coming into a strange situation, strange people, you don't know what's coming on us to it. And instead of just being able to come in and at least find a seat and sit down, you kind of in this hotel and went out of the room, <laughs> you know? And I, I, walked, I walked around and said, hello, are you with security? He said, yes, we got for home, we couldn't find a room, and uh, God, this is a bloody awful stop. <laughs> And that was all around uh, <laughs> feeling a bit threatened by it. Okay. And I said, that's okay, well, there's a room with sugar solid. And I think what happens if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you see that thing afterwards now and you can see it, if you think about something like anything like that, you just get better and better and better at dealing with it. I mean, I used to. Um, <laughs> I guess like everybody, you kind of work, you know, from uh, your first job, you work through, and you get, I, I always used to be, if somebody said they were a director, I was just like a gibbering wreck, you know, I would want them to say, I'm a director, I was gone, you know, that was all I needed, that was just the trigger, and I was finished, and now, because I've been doing this for a long time, blah, 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 I just couldn't give a damn about that. You know, I just treated them exactly the same as everybody else mm -hmm. as an equal, and they respond as an equal. But I, I'm talking about self-defeating. I mean, I was lost before I started, and they didn't do anything. It was just me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so it just needs to work at some of those things. And there'll always be things like that. But if you can get into the things that you do regularly, that part of your daily life. Really good to get on top of them. Yeah, I think we're, we're hoping to just, as you say, come in quite calmly because Tommy and I have been here since ten to nine, haven't we? <laughs> we're sitting like prunes along in that, in that, you, in that room. You even said good morning to David and I sitting at the breakfast table. Did we? Oh, well, that was before it was unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> we just thought you were recording a couple on the weekend or something, right? We didn't know how we were. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> we should be so lucky. I wonder how you get that one, Brush. So this is nice shot. Well, we've done that again today. Must be telepathy, Tommy. So the point that there is my is that everybody's into a whole lot of stuff, self-defeating behaviour, right? And you'll not eliminate it all. If you eliminate 
some of the top ones. What then comes to the surface is some of the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer. And it's like that's a bottomless pit. So perhaps as soon as you start trying to pick a few of the, the uh, heavy ones off the top, <coughs> you get down to the not so heavy ones. But there'll, there'll never not be nothing. That's the bad news. <coughs> Good news is you can tackle them, right? Bad news is um, this is say bye bye. <laughs> you can still have some. Are you ready to make a commitment to start tackling one or two of those from Monday? Yeah. yeah. Think about that. I might ask you to. Uh, you know, it's terrible. I'm like saying I'm ready to make a commitment. And I'm right now, and I'm being very open now. I'm thinking. I'm going to be to speak to them. I'm sitting up to this other guy, and I'm going to get him to start this problem out. Right at him. I'm being aggressive. The very first thing I'm going to be, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to do that. The very first thing I'm going to be is aggressive. But you can the, minute aware, I mean, the, the minute you're aware of something like this, even though you don't get it right, you start moving towards it. Instantaneously you start moving towards it because you suddenly start evaluating things in a different way. And it's almost uh, subconscious, you know. I mean, I just, I just, you met me when I, I was 23 and met, met me now, mm -hmm. and if you put me into some situations, I would just be so different. But if you said to me, when did you learn how to do that differently? I couldn't say it was, you know, 1st of March, 1980 yeah. or something. I mean, they, these things just kind of drip, feed in, I think. What's the point you're going to make, Arthur? Awesome. No, I was just saying that um, he's saying he's going to be aggressive, but he can do it in a structured fashion so it doesn't become aggressive. Mm. The, the act itself would appear to be, but if you work at it and you can go and say to him, look here, I feel just what you were saying earlier, when you were uh, came back from that course, it was super to work with you, but you've gone back to being, can we not work at it together and, and mm, get a happy mm, medium or mm, something mm, along that line? Mm, mm. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, you're probably quite right. Because if I, I'm really aggressive, it's only going to be a thing worse. Don't dive in, just tip. <laughs> Put the big two in. So, enough on that. Should we march on? Mm -hmm. <coughs> What's the next step? <laughs> what do you want it to be? <laughs> Can you excuse me? Sure. Five minute break? Yeah. Get on some of the group. Yeah, that's not a And there's all sorts of things happening. Is that is that a process um, for the behavior or is it content for the behavior? If you're into a a budgeting meeting, right? That words talking about cost and uh, systems to measure performance would be content. <coughs> Comments about process would be how how are we going to work together? So the content is about the what, what is it that you're actually called sort of problem solving on and the and the process is the how you're dealing with each other as you're doing that. And process can be a mixture of um, techniques like uh, taking a taking a ballot as a technique. You can say, do we take a take a secret ballot or show of hands or uh, do we go with the majority, right? Or do we do presentations, that's all forms of how, that's all forms of techniques. Do we watch the video, some other process technique? We're going to do some process training, and part of the how is we're going to watch a video. <coughs> and the other is behaviors, types of behavior. And there's a few different ways of looking at behavior, but you, today and yesterday, have been looking at assertive, responsive, aggressive, and non-assertive as types of behavior. So looking at a group working, which we're going to do it in a video, you can say, ah, oh, you know, that, that's aggression, that's not assertiveness, that's assertiveness. You, 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 seeing how people are dealing with each other. So we're going to watch the 12 Angry Men tape. Anybody remember seeing that? It's an ancient film, it's in black and white. 
I mean, from that jury or guilt just me. Hmm? Tell just me. Twelve just, just me. No, twelve angry men. You can see why in a minute. Uh, but the, you know, the beginning of the film, which I won't show you the beginning, they're in the courtroom listening to evidence, the little Jewish lad's accused of killing his father or something, right? And here they are in the room trying to decide is he guilty or not. And it starts off, um, <coughs> this is all content I'm telling you, right? starts off where Henry Fonda is the only person who isn't sure that he's guilty. Eleven people are sure. Henry Fonda is just not sure. He's not sure he's not guilty. He's not sure he is guilty. So it's like 11 to 1. And it's all about trying to persuade Henry Fonda to join the 11. And Henry Fonda gradually uh, turns it around the other way with all sorts of wonderful behavior. So I'm telling you that so that the story doesn't seduce you into the content, right? I want you to be able to look at the process. So with a bit of look, I'll be able to stop it and say, hey, what's that bit of behavior? Um, what caused that bit of behavior? So we look at it and we look at assertive, responsive, aggressive, non-assertive. We also pick up the odd technique. Okay. Ready for me to start? Pick up the chairs and <laughs> Yeah, 
Judy Foreman, and we started being aggressive when he was being challenged, and then he, was back, then he went to being put an honest effort, I don't care. He has very withdrawn. I know as much as you do. According to testimony, the boy looks guilty, and he is. I sat there in court for six days listening while the evidence built up. Everybody sounded so positive. You know, I, I began to get a peculiar feeling about this trial. I mean, nothing is that positive. There are a lot of questions I'd like to ask. I don't know, maybe they wouldn't have meant anything, but I began to get the feeling that the defense counsel wasn't conducting a thorough enough cross-examination. I'm not he. On, on behavior, you can never make your mind up on one or two bits, right? <coughs> or you can check it out, but you can watch a theme mm -hmm. with, with no eye contact, mm -hmm. right? So there's no eye contact. Oh, there we said no eye contact can be non-assertive or it can be aggressive. Where do you think he is? Aggressive. Right. It fits with the rest of his behavior, right? He's being mostly aggressive, but now he's being like silently aggressive or not looking. Well, why little things? That what little things? Listen, when these fellows don't ask questions, it's because they know the answer's already and they figure they'll be hurt. Twenty-one voice tone. How many could use almost the same words with a gentle voice and it would be a, a nervous attempt to find out some, some information but that's like contemptuous, right? It's so possible for a lawyer to be just plain stupid, isn't it? I mean, it's possible. You sound like you met my brother law <laughs> <coughs> I, I kept putting myself in the kid's place. I'd have asked for another lawyer, I think. I mean, if I was on trial for my life, I'd want my lawyer to tear the prosecution witnesses to shreds, or at least try to. Look, there was one alleged eyewitness to this killing. Someone else claims he heard the killing, saw the boy run out afterwards, and there was a lot of circumstantial evidence. But actually, those two witnesses were the entire case for the prosecution. Supposing they're wrong. What do you mean, supposing they're wrong? What's the point of having witnesses at all? Could they be wrong? What are you trying to say? Those people sat on the stand under oath. They're only people. People make mistakes. Could they be wrong? Well, no, I don't think so. You know so. Oh, come on. Nobody can know a thing like that. This isn't an exact science. That's right. It isn't. Okay, let, let's get to the point. What about the switch knife? They found in the old man's chest. Uh, well, wait a minute. There's some people who haven't talked to you. Shouldn't we go in order? They don't get a chance to talk to you. Be quiet a second, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say What can you say about the little guy's voice? But no, 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 sir. No, no, sir. No, no, sir. The night this fine, upright boy admitted by the night of the killer. Let's talk about it. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Mr. Foreman. We all saw what it looks like. Why do we have to see it again? The gentleman had the right to see exhibits and evidence. Sir, could you bring us a knife? Knife? Yeah. The knife and the way it was bought is pretty strong evidence, don't you think? I do. Good. Now, suppose we take these facts one at a time. One. The boy admitted going out of the house at 8 o'clock on the night of the murder after being slapped several times by his father. No, no, no. No, he didn't say slapped. He said punch. There's a difference between a slap and a punch. After being hit several times by his father. Two. He went directly to a neighborhood junk shop where he bought one of those... Uh, switch knives. Switchblade knives. This wasn't what you'd call an ordinary knife. It had a very unusual carved handle and blade. The storekeeper who sold it to him said it was the only one of its kind he had ever had in stock. Three. He met some friends of his in front of a tavern about 8.45. Am I right so far? Yes, you are. You bet he is. He talked with his friends for about an hour, leaving them at 9.45. During this time, they saw the switch knife. Four. They identified the death weapon in court as that very same knife. Five. He arrived home at about 10 o'clock. Now, this is where the stories offered by the uh, state and the boy begin to diverge slightly. He claims that he went to a movie at about 11.30, returning home at 3.10 to find his father dead and himself arrested. And he also claims the two detectives arrested him and threw him down a half a flight of stairs. Now, what happened to the switch knife? He claims that it fell through a hole in his pocket on the way to the movie sometime between 11.30 and uh, 3.10, and that he never saw it again. Now, there is a tale, gentlemen. I think it's quite clear that the boy never went to the movies that night. No one in the house saw him go out at 11.30. No one at the theater identified him. He couldn't even remember the names of the pictures he saw. What actually happened is this. The boy stayed home, had another fight.
fight with his father, stabbed him to death, and left the house at 10 minutes after 12. He even remembered to wipe the knife and clean the fingerprints. Now, are you trying to tell me that this knife really fell through a hole in the boy's pocket, someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, and stabbed his father with it just to test its sharpness? No, I'm just saying it's possible the boy lost his knife, and if somebody else stabbed his father with a similar knife, it's just possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very unusual knife. I've never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to the boy. Aren't you asking us to accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm just saying a coincidence is possible. And I say it's not possible. What is that? Where did you get it? I went out walking for a couple of hours last night. I walked through the boys' neighborhood. I bought that a little pawn shop just two blocks from the boys' house. It cost six dollars. It's against the law to buy or sell switchblade knife. Hmm. Where's that last one? Against the law. To buy a switchblade knife. Defense, isn't it? Hmm? Defense. That's a set of circa four. Tell them they come in and buy them. Yeah. I was wondering if it's getting into aggressive because it's like using like threat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's telling the public it's broken law. Yeah. Yeah. The law. There's a new port a real bright trick. Now suppose you tell me what it proves. Maybe there are ten knives like that, so what? Maybe there are. But what does it mean? You found an unloaded knife blanket. What's that? The discovery of the eight. Typical. Work. Mm -hmm. Similar number of people, a smaller number of people.